On today's episode, I'm going to do my first ever triple review. That's right, I'm reviewing three comic books, two chosen by the community and one chosen by my beautiful wife. Will I be able to give you a good review in a short amount of time and hopefully make this video somewhat interesting? Stay tuned and find out. Hello to all my good friends out there in YouTube land. It's your good buddy Phil Tastic Phil here. Welcome back to the channel. Just like I said in the intro, we're reviewing three books today. So I'm going to jump right into it. The first is Firepower, issue number 25. Uh, this was requested by Cliff on Comics. I'm going to go ahead and put a link, uh, by the way, in the description. And, you know, I'll put a card up here somewhere, too, just so you can get to Cliff's channel. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, I haven't really read any Firepower before. I, this is my first and only introduction into Firepower. I like uh, some of Robert Kirkman's stuff, I'll say it. I'm not the biggest Kirkman fan. Uh, I enjoyed Oblivion's song, but I don't think I've really followed. Maybe, actually, I take that back. Ultimate X-Men, I did enjoy his run. But uh, I haven't really regularly followed a whole lot of his work. Uh, I am, like everybody and their mother and grandmother now, reading Void Rivals. But, uh, yeah, that's this definitely isn't Void Rivals. Uh, but art by one of my favorite, favorite comic book artists. Uh, really one of my favorite artists all around, Chris Samney. Uh, actually, every October for the past couple of years, I've been doing the Chris Samney Bat-tober Challenge, and I plan to do it in just a couple weeks for uh, for this Bat-tober. So, stay tuned, and hopefully, you'll see some great artwork. Uh, so, right on to this, I'll tell you this: as much as I love Chris Samney's artwork, um, this isn't the strongest, in my opinion, or the best example of his work. Uh, and, and it's not that he's done anything technically bad. It just, um, you know, and I certainly felt like it. Uh, resonated with some sort of emotions and whatnot. I, I just felt like at times it was just a little bit off. Uh, now, again, I'm jumping into this comic 25 issues in. I have no idea what happened in the past 24, so take that with a grain of salt. From what I can gather, there was a big conflict in the prior issue, and now this is kind of the reckoning and the fallout of this. Uh, I will say this, uh, Chris's drawings, or Samney's drawings, excuse me, do capture a great deal of the emotional gravis of the situation. Uh, some of the action scenes, I felt like it doesn't flow quite as well. This giant kind of dragon attack on Chicago, led by some guy who looks like Heihachi from Tekken. Um, all in all, I'll be honest with you, if Firepower were available on something like the Marvel, Marvel Unlimited app or the DC Infinite app, where, you know, like you pay one fee and you can read whatever the publisher puts out, I would definitely check out the other 24 issues just to kind of get a better understanding of this book. But... Alas, it doesn't, at least that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, if you know of any way you can read the other 24 issues on the cheap, even online, just let me know. And legal, too. You know, I, I don't think you should steal any content, especially from the creators. Um, all in all, I'll say that this was a good read. Next book up is a pick from my beautiful wife. It is Storm, issue number three. Uh, this is the Rush Dodderman uh, Hellfire Gala variant. Uh, I have not been reading Storm. Uh, I have not been really reading any of the five-issue X-Men series uh, that they've come out with, the limited series, that are, that, that is. Uh, it just after, uh, I think after the, the Wolverine one, could be wrong on the title, uh, it, it just kind of felt more like a money grab. Like it was like, you know what, we found these five panels or so that we could exploit in between famous kind of X-Men events. Let's figure out a story to do in here. Uh, so I haven't read Storm issues number one or two. That's my roundabout way of saying it. Uh, writer in Nascenti, great writer. Sometimes I like her stuff, sometimes I don't. Uh, in this case, I did like it. Uh, art by Geraldo or Geraldo, excuse me, Borges. Not the uh, not the talk show guy, at least that from what I understand. Uh, and, and I have to say this, especially for one of these, I, I call them legacy reads. These little kind of pieces of nostalgia they try to throw in there. It was a really good read. I found myself really engaged with it. Uh, I, I won't be running out to go buy the other issues now. I'm just going to wait online because I pay for my subscription. Might as well use it and save a little space in here. One of the other things I really liked that Nascenti did in this is that for the first time in a really long time, we see a storm that is very unsure of herself, so much so that she actually uh, gets into a clash with Xavier over just even joining the X-Men and wondering if she should really even be there. Uh, something really rare that to see in such a strong character, but it makes sense because it's these opportunities of, you know, maybe inner turmoil, turmoil 
that we see strong characters come out. I'll say this for the artwork. Although it's serviceable, there are some kind of minor things that really bother me. Um, Colossus's body, for example, and I say that because there's two distinct. <laughs> I said because there's two distinct scenes where Colossus has no shirt on. Uh, in his, uh, I don't you don't want to, what you want to say his non-metallic form. Um, it, it just kind of looks awkward to me. Yeah, it looks more like a technical drawing and less than a less of a uh, kind of a fluid moving living human being. And especially when they do this long establishing shot uh, from behind, so they're trying to do like up and above. Uh, Colossus's body just kind of looks bulky and actually a little chubby from the back. It's it's kind of a weird build. It's like a chubby muscular build. Uh, but I mean, you might see that as nitpicking. It, it was enough just to kind of distract me. Uh, the action in this book is done very, very well. Um, yeah, there's a nice fight scene in here. Nothing special, nothing that we've never seen before, especially in an X-Men book. Uh, all in all, good read. Uh, definitely one of the better of these five-issue legacy uh, reads that Marvel has, a legacy series rather than Marvel's been putting out lately. Last but not least is Frank Frazetta's Mothman. Uh, this is issue two. Didn't know it was issue two. Uh, but this is a uh, variant of cover C, and I like it. Kind of looks like a classic uh, NES uh, Nintendo game. They even have the seal on it. Taking a look here, uh, this was requested by Evil Mike. Uh, Evil Mike is uh, a channel I like to watch regularly. A nice guy. He shows up in my live feeds regularly, and uh, he does some really great reviews himself too. He's actually kind of saved me some money watching his reviews. So I recommend you check him out. I'll put a card around here somewhere too. Make sure you click on. Cliff and uh, and Mike and support them. Um, I have to say, I was really disappointed in this book. Uh, I like paranormal stories and whatnot. Uh, we have a connection to one. I've spoken about it a little, little tiny bit before. That's unfortunately the most that you're going to hear about me talking about it right now. But, uh, you know, Mothman is one of those ones that I've kind of followed a little bit. I saw that not so good Richard Gere movie back from like maybe 10, 15 years ago. But uh, yeah, this kind of really threw me for a loop because I'm like, okay, maybe this is going to be like a nice kind of paranormal monster story. Kind of, I don't know, it's just something refreshing and different. And it really isn't. From what I read in this book, it really makes Mothman less into a, a creature or monster and more into an alien whose ship has just crashed here. Uh, and that I don't like because you've kind of, at least in my opinion, have taken out the lore completely and just said, okay, we're going to take this character and throw him in here. You could really just create your own alien and do that. But let's take Mothman just so that people interested in Mothman, maybe like Fantastic, <laughs> go out and buy it. And I guess if that was their mission that they accomplished it. Uh, for me, I mean, it, you just took this creature that you could have done something original and different and kind of reduced him to an episode of Alf. There's even a scene where he is sitting and having a drink with an older woman and then uh, somebody walks in and he tries, he gets stuck in the ceiling trying to fly away from them. Yeah, it made, made it just really goofy. Um, the artwork itself is okay. You know, look, you're, you're not getting, I think, a top tier artist on it. You have some nicer scenes. I really have to say, I think these are some of the nicer car chases. Uh, I've seen in a comic that I can remember, uh, but the goofiness is just too much in this, at least for me to uh, to enjoy. I will say this: they managed to kind of uh, fit somehow Pantera's cemetery gate uh, cemetery gates lyrics into this. Uh, to what end? I, I don't think it was particularly effective, and if anything, it was like, okay, well, I guess they liked that song, but has not a whole lot to do with the story. I, I think they were going for more of an uh, of a impending danger kind of build up using this song, but it just kind of fell flat. Yeah, you know, and I think it's kind of an unusual choice to include the song Cemetery Gates in here. Uh, you know, if you're a hard rock fan or a rock fan, even from maybe my generation, yes, you do know the song, but I, I don't know that if you, uh, I don't know if you have never heard the song that it would still have that kind of impact that they were trying to go for. And as somebody who knows the song, I can tell you they didn't really get to that kind of verboding buildup, at least in my opinion. Um, I hate to do this, 
this is my first comic book hell pick. Burn After Reading did not enjoy this whatsoever. I'm hoping maybe somebody comes around one day and makes a Mo uh, Mothman uh, series that I can really kind of dig and maybe, maybe a little bit lore about the monster. But alas, it is not this book. Yeah, I had kind of high hopes too, because on the cover, again, the you know, I was thinking, oh, maybe this is all series of one shots that are paranormal stories, but nope. Nope. We just wanted to use uh, uh, an interesting premise and water it down. Uh, so look, those are my reviews for this week. Uh, again, these are my opinions. Don't have to be your opinions. If you disagree with me, great. If you agree with me, even better. Um, either way, I would appreciate if you gave me a nice little that thumbs up. Hopefully that's not too cheesy for you. And uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Uh, tune in this Saturday to Last Week Tonight Live, uh, Last Week Today Live, excuse me, Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, and see what other books I've read and what maybe you can pick what we're going to review next. Well, there's nothing else to say right now other than peace, love, and comics. Take care. Thank you.